Today we will look at solving inequalities in factored form. In today's examples, we will have expressions in parentheses multiplied by an integer. These inequalities can be solved in multiple ways, and the choice is yours, well, hopefully. So let's get started. So in this first inequality, we have 8 times the quantity x minus 1 plus 2 is less than 26. We're going to solve this inequality in two ways. First, we're going to simplify down this left side of the inequality. And to simplify it down, we will use order of operations. So the first step is to evaluate any expressions within the parentheses. We can't simplify this down any further. Next is to evaluate exponents. There are no exponents. Step three is to multiply and divide from left to right. So we do have this multiplication. And we'll use the distributive property to multiply 8 times the quantity x minus 1. So we're going to distribute this 8 to both terms within the parentheses. This is 8x minus 8. And then we'll bring down the plus 2 less than 26. From here, we'll combine like terms. So we have 8x minus 6 less than 26. We have simplified down this left side. So now we're going to solve this inequality. And to solve inequalities and equations, we will typically do order of operations in reverse. So we find our unknown variable. And first, we'll undo any addition or subtraction. And then we'll undo any multiplication or division. So we'll undo the subtraction of 6 by adding 6 to both sides. We have 8x less than 32. And then undo multiplication with division, resulting in x less than 4. So using distributive property, we first simplify down this left side. And then we solve the inequality using inverse operations. We do not have to simplify this left side first. Instead, we can solve this inequality using order of operations in reverse. Our unknown variable in this case is inside a set of parentheses. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this set of parentheses, so everything in this box, all by itself on one side and then everything else on the other. So treat the parentheses like it's an unknown variable. And right now, 2 is added to that set of parentheses. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. Now we have 8 times the quantity x minus 1 less than 24. We still have a parentheses multiplied to 8. So to undo the multiplication, we'll divide both sides by 8, giving us x minus 1, in parentheses, less than 3. So now everything in parentheses is by itself on the left side, and we can drop those parentheses. We no longer need that grouping. So we have x minus 1 less than 3. Add 1 to both sides and we end up with x less than 4. We solve the inequality in two different ways, but it's the same inequality, so the answer will be the same. If they're not, something went wrong on either one or both methods. Now when we graph this solution, we're going to have an open circle at 4, because 4 is not a part of the solution but all numbers less than 4 are. So we're going to shade everything to the left of 4. We'll go ahead and check a few points. We will check at equality, where the two sides of the inequality are equal to each other. We'll also pick a point within the solution. 0 is always great to test, because it often makes the arithmetic easier. And let's also pick a point not within the solution. So we'll try the point 6. So when we test at x equal to 4, 
Again, that's where the two expressions are equal to each other and it's not a part of the solution. We end up with the statement 26 less than 26. That is not a true statement because four is not a solution. But we did find correctly where those two expressions are equal to each other. X equal to zero, that should be a solution. And we end up with the statement negative six less than 26, and that's a true statement. And then testing X equal to six, again, this is not a solution. And we end up with 42 less than 26. That is not true. And that is what we expect when we test a number that is not a solution to the inequality. Let's try another problem and we will solve this using those two methods. So first we'll use the distributive property. So we end up with eight less than or equal to, and then we're gonna distribute this two to both terms within the parentheses. This gives us six minus two X. And now we'll solve this inequality. We'll subtract six from both sides resulting in two less than or equal to negative two X. And then dividing both sides by negative two, we end up with negative one on the left and X on the right. And then since we divided by a negative number, negative two, we're gonna switch the direction of inequality. And then rewriting the solution with the variable on the left, we end up with X less than or equal to negative one. So solving this without using the distributive property first, the unknown variable is within that set of parentheses. So we're gonna treat everything inside that parentheses, so everything inside this box, as one big unknown. And we're gonna solve for that unknown first. It's multiplied by two, so we're gonna divide both sides by two, giving us four less than or equal to, in parentheses, three minus X. We no longer have the need for that grouping so this gives us four less than or equal to three minus X. Then solving this inequality, we're gonna subtract three from both sides. We have one less than or equal to negative X, dividing both sides by negative one. We get negative one greater than or equal to X. And then rewriting this, so the variables on the left, that's X less than or equal to negative one. Graphing this, we'll have a closed circle at negative one. Negative one is a solution to the inequality. And we will shade everything to the left or smaller than negative one. Checking some points, we will check add equality first at X equal to negative one. We will also check a point within the solution, negative two, or any other point within the solution, and a point outside of solution. So we'll do x equal to zero. Checking at x equal to negative one, we end up with eight less than or equal to eight. In this case, that's a true statement because it is less than or equal to. It's also where the two expressions are equal to each other. Checking a point that is a solution, we end up with eight less than or equal to 10. That's a true statement. And checking a number that is not part of the solution at X equal to zero, we end up with eight less than or equal to six, and that is not a true statement. When I'm solving this particular inequality, I would probably choose the second method, just using inverse operations to solve this inequality, because I notice that eight is divisible by two. And this is gonna quickly simplify down this inequality. But there is not much of an advantage using one of these methods over the other for this particular inequality. Now looking at this first problem, 
I'm probably going to use the distributive property first to simplify down the left side of this inequality first. But there is not much advantage in using one method over the other. I will typically use the distributive property to simplify down one or both sides of the inequality, unless if I see there may be an advantage to skipping the distributive property and going straight to solving the inequality, as discussed with this second problem. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these three problems. In this first problem, since 18 is divisible by 3, I went ahead and used inverse operations. And then solving that inequality, we get a less than or equal to 4. In the second problem, I went ahead and used the distributive property to simplify down that left side to 6b. Solving the inequality, we get b greater than or equal to 9 6 which simplifies down to 3 halves. For this last problem, again, I chose to not use the distributive property and isolated everything in the parentheses first, resulting in 1 minus 3c less than 16. And then solving that inequality, we get c greater than negative 5. Continue practicing solving inequalities, and I'll see you in the next video.